The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations, Tucson, Arizona, on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus, job number 33922. Please utilize this five-digit job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. We'll get started on a brief orientation of your new apparatus. Starting just under the front bumper, you'll find two open-ended tow hooks attached to the frame rail. Moving up onto the bumper face, you'll find dual air horns on the passenger and driver side. Located evenly spaced across the front, you'll find three sirens. Moving up onto the bumper extension, you'll find a tubbed storage location for hose storage for your front bumper load. Just to the driver's side, you'll find a swivel inch and a half discharge. Moving up onto the cab face, you'll find on the outer edges a turn marker clearance light. Just inside of that location, you'll find the headlight structure housing the low and high beam headlights. The high beam is located on the inside. Above that, you'll find a cluster housing a turn signal and also an emergency light. And just above that, you'll find a grab handle. There are three windshield wipers across your one-piece seamless windshield. On the outer edges of the cab, you'll find your mirrors housing a convex and a flat mirror. Moving up to the brow of the apparatus, you'll find five clearance lights. Moving further into the center, you'll find a forward-facing floodlight. And as we move up onto the roof of the cab, you'll find your emergency warning light bar located within the Inside of the light bar in the center, you'll find an Opticom, and then just above that, you'll find a Go Light Spotlight. Let's take a look at some of the close ups. First, starting with a side view here. This is the bumper extension showing a front facing emergency warning light, your hose tray, dry deck material inside, and a swivel discharge. Moving now to the cab face, we'll see those headlight structure, housing low and high beam headlights, turn and emergency light. Let's move to the side of the cab, driver's side specifically. This is your driver's side shore inlet. It is a 20 amp auto eject plug. When plugged in, you will have an indicator. And then just above that, you'll also have a battery voltage indicator indicating that your battery is in the charge process. Moving now to the door, you'll find a grab handle with a keyed entry point. You'll also find grab handles at all points of entry for personnel for ease and exiting the cab. On the side, just above the front tire, you'll find a side facing emergency warning light. Moving to the lower section of the rear cab, you'll find a D handle that's locking for an additional compartment space. Let's go ahead and move now to the mid section of your apparatus. Let's talk a little bit about folding steps. There are four located in this area. An additional step is located just above the pump panel. Let's go ahead and start on the left-hand side of the image here, starting with three pre-connected hose. Because of those hose pre-connects from aloft, there is the possibility of entanglement. That's why we have a warning label here. From this point, we'll go ahead and start at the very top section with a few of the gauges and identifying items within your pump panel. First, let's start with your pump intake gauge. This is your master pump intake gauge. Moving just to the right, you'll find the vacuum and pressure test gauge ports. They are currently plugged. These would be utilized for testing purposes. Moving up from this location, you'll find your master pump discharge gauge. And then moving further up to the top, might be a little difficult to see in this image. There is an audible alarm here. The outer edge of that bezel does allow you to dampen the sound. Let's start with your pump boss. On the left-hand side, the check engine light, if illuminated, would be yellow in color. In the center, you'll find a digital readout for the RPMs. Moving to the right, if illuminated, you'd have a stop engine light that would be red in color. As we move down onto the module itself, you'll find a blue menu button. This allows you to scroll through the various menu functions of your pump boss. Located in the very center, you'll find all of your engine diagnostic information. Moving slightly to the right in red, you'll find a silence button. This will allow you to silence any audible alarms that may be sounding. Moving down, you have two options in yellow, either pressure or RPM. Those are your two options, either pressure control mode or throttle control mode. 
You'll also have an indication here of menu information displayed in a digital readout. To the right, you'll find a throttle ready green indicator indicating that it's okay to engage the throttle. If you choose, you can use presets, which is the green button. Down at the very bottom, you'll find your throttle control, right to increase, left to decrease. If you'd like to move to the idle position, you can simply push in the center. Let's move up to the very top. There is a switch for your panel light. As we move to the right, there's also an indicator here that says OK to pump. That's an indicator light that would be green that your pump is properly engaged. Moving down, you'll find your driver's side scene lights, passenger side scene lights, rear scene lights, your reel rewind, and then in red, you'll have an air horn switch. Let's move from this location just down slightly and to the left. This is where you're going to find your intake relief valve module. There are instructions on its operation on the placard. Just beneath that, you'll find a warning label here regarding fall hazard. And as we move to the right, you'll find all of your crosslays, crosslay 1, 2, and 3. Moving just to the right, you'll find your reel discharge. That's for the reel that's in the dunnage area. Moving to the right, you'll find your deluge discharge. That's for your master stream device in the, day, in the uh, dunnage area also. As we move down from this location, you'll find the passenger main inlet. This is an electronic valve that opens and closes the valve on the passenger side. We also have number one, number three, number two, and number four discharges. They're clearly color coded and labeled. Here's some close-ups of the items we just talked about. Your intake relief valve. Moving just to the right, your passenger main inlet. Let's move down to the next section, identify a few items within this area. First, starting on the left-hand side, this is a placard provided by Pierce when it was tested. We'll go through that in just a few moments. On the uh, next section over, you'll find two two and a half inch discharges. To the right, you'll find a warning label here regarding pressure hazard. Caps may be under pressure, be cautious when opening them. To the right, you'll find your main inlet. This is the Pierce American Flag Eagle. And then to the right, you'll find your minimum operation maintenance schedule, which happens to coincide with the placard on the left, and I'll go over that in just a few moments. We also have a warning label here regarding fall hazard. And as we move further down, we'll identify a few items here. I have some close-ups of those. It might be a little bit easier to uh, view. Moving to the right, you do have a warning label here that only trained personnel should operate this piece of equipment only after they've received proper training. To the right, you'll find your RPM counter, Moving further down to the left, we have an additional warning label here regarding foam failure hazard. Do not mix different brands, consistencies of foam. You have foam A tank and foam B tank. Moving just to the right, you'll find your two and a half inch auxiliary inlet. This is a two and a half inch female inlet. To the right, you'll find a placard from Watrous indicating the type of pump you have in addition with the transmission and the rated capacity of this pump. Just down to the next level, you'll find all of your associated and color-coded discharge drains. To the right, you'll find your main pump drain, and then just beneath that, you'll find your manual pump shift. Let's go back all the way up to the upper left-hand corner. We'll talk about that placard. This is the 150, 200, and 250 test pressures. On the left-hand side, you'll find the associated GPM with the test pressure, and on the right-hand side, you'll find the associated RPMs. This also houses the information regarding your job number 33922-04. Let's take a look at some close-ups. This is your air supply, air outlet, and also your air inlet. That is a turn, not a pull. Moving to the right, your RPM counter. This would be for testing purposes. And as we move down, your Watrous placard indicating that this is a 1,250 GPM pump. Moving further down, discharge drains and also your main pump drain and manual pump shift. Let's move all the way to the left side where you'll find your foam A and foam B. These are your inlets. At the very bottom in the running board, you'll find an additional hose storage location. Let's move to the top of the truck now to the dunnage area where you'll find your booster line or red line on the right hand side where the arrow is indicating. That is a location where you would put a manual tool for rewind. And then further to the right, you'll find a tensioning knob. Moving also downward, you'll find a top location for the reel rewind. This is a button to activate the electronic reel rewind. Further in the discharge or in the uh, dunnage area, you'll find your two locations. This is the foam tank fill locations for foam tank A and B. The previous was for your water tank top fill. We also have additional warning labels in this area indicating possible foam failure for mixing different brands or consistencies of foam. Here's a close-up of tank B and also that warning label. And then as we look forward, here is tank A. You can see also the warning label within this area. 
Let's move now uh, to the water tank location. This would be for top fill for your water tank. And then we'll move now to the rear section. You'll find these yellow diamonds indicating a safe walking area. And as we look to the forward, you'll find the release mechanisms for your ladder when it is down in the operational mode. You have a 24 foot, a 14 foot roof, and a 10 foot folding. There's also two locations here for long tool handles. Let's move now from this location. We'll look toward the front in the dunnage area where you'll find your master stream device. Moving forward to this location, this is toward the front of the cab. You'll find your pre-connected hose cover. As we look to the cab itself, you'll find your unit number, 20, and then on the left-hand side, an indicator that this is a non-walking surface. It may be slippery. As we move to the body of the vehicle, we'll start first on the left-hand, uh, on the uh, driver's side. This is gonna be a clearance light two emergency lights, one just above the rear tire and one at the very top corner, and then also a side facing scene light. Let's move from this location here. We'll identify some of the items within the compartments, first starting with the first compartment to the rear of the pump panel. When plugged into shore power, this outlet will be activated, which allows you the charging system, which is currently plugged in to maintain your battery system. You'll also find just in front of the rear axle, SCBA bottle storage location, with retaining straps, a compartment that does have keyed locks, LED lighting inside. As we move to the rear portion of the axle, just in this compartment, you'll find your ultra low sulfur diesel. It is the silver cap and also some information here regarding caution that you should turn your vehicle off when filling. Moving downward, you'll also find your blue cap, which is going to be your 4.5 US gallon DEF cap. As we move to the rear section, once again, LED lighting and adjustable shelving and ventilation. Taking a quick look from the rear section of the apparatus, let's cover some of the items within the rear of the apparatus. First, starting with your tail lights at the very top, an emergency warning light, stop, turn, and reverse light. We also have rear scene light located on the driver's side. As we move upward, we have two emergency warning lights. This is part of your upper section of your emergency warning lights. Located in the very center, you'll find your traffic advisor and just underneath the traffic advisor, slightly difficult to see, but this is your backup camera. There are also steps located here that are full down. There are three located in this section uh, and also one in the upper portion. We do have some warning labels here also. We'll talk about those in just a moment. Here's some close-ups of the items. This is your rear scene light on and off switch. Moving upward, this is your warning buzzer, one stop, two go, and three back up. Moving to the center section at the very top, you'll find additional storage location here for a folding ladder if necessary. You'll also find in your center compartment two adjustable shelves. Moving to the right, you'll find your passenger rear discharge. This is a two and a half inch discharge. We also have your hose dividers and at the very top, a grab handle. Let's move down to the passenger side of the vehicle. We'll start with the very first compartment in the rear. You do have a full stretched out shelf at the very bottom, which will fully extend, and also adjustable shelving. This is the release mechanism for that tray. As we move to the location over the rear wheel, you'll find a tool board with a D-handle release mechanism. This is the hinged side with a lock mechanism on the inside. As we move to the next compartment forward, you'll find an SCBA mount, LED lighting, and adjustable shelving. Just to the rear section, you'll also find three SCBA bottle storage locations with retaining straps, and then a single bottage or dual bottle storage located in the front section of the rear axle. I'd also like to point out this placard regarding warning, extremely exhaust diesel exhaust temperatures, and be cautious where you park your vehicle. As we move to the mid location, we're gonna talk about some warning labels here. One, an additional fall injury warning label, also an entanglement hazard because of those hoses coming from aloft, and as we move further down, you'll find pressure hazard warning because caps may be under pressure. Be cautious when removing them. And to the right, also a warning regarding fall hazard. There are two discharges located on this side. You have two two and a half inch discharges located with the arrows indicating here. As we move to the left, the American flag Eagle Pierce logo. This is your pump intake. Because of this being an electronic valve, you do have an override in the upper left. Moving to the right, this is your large diameter discharge. Moving downward from this location, you'll find your passenger side auxiliary inlet, and this is a two and a half inch female inlet. Across the bottom, you'll find all of your color-coded and labeled drains. 
We'll identify a few more areas here. First at the very top, same as the opposite side. This is your pre-connect section. There are three located here. As we move just inside the pan door on the panel itself, you'll find your foam A drain and foam B drains. Moving from here, let's go downward from this location where you'll find your powered equipment rack. We'll go over those modules next. We do have some danger and warning labels here regarding the moving of equipment. You also have an on-off switch and a master uh, on-off switch rather, and then a lift up or down. There are instructions here for raise and also lower. Moving just to the right, you'll find your cab lift operations. We have some warning labels here. Also just advice, make sure everything's secured with inside the cab. You do have instructions here regarding raise and lower, and then also the raise and lower switch, which is protected. Moving to the right, you'll find your air horn in red and a passenger side scene light switch. You do have a warning label here for caution. Folding steps must be up in the position prior to raising your cab. Located in the running board, you'll find additional hose storage location. Let's take a look inside that other pan door just to the right where you'll find your hydraulic rack reservoir. There also is a hand operation for your hydraulic rack in case of electronic failure. The lever in, in black matches the instructions on the rear section of this door. And there are instructions here for lower and raise. Here's a close up of the actual mechanism. Let's move from uh, this location down to the very bottom. Once again, color coded and labeled discharge drains. As we move from this location, let's move all the way to the very front section here of the uh, pump panel. And uh, this is your passenger side auxiliary inlet. Let's move forward from this location to the cab itself where you'll find a matching door on the passenger side uh, just at the rear section of the rear wall. As we move forward, you'll also find aluminum Alcoa wheels and Goodyear tires. Same configuration on the opposite side. As we move interior to the cab, you'll find affixed to all door panels this set of safety warning labels. You'll also find at the uh, hinge section this grab handle, allowing you to get in and out of the cab for ease. As we look inside, there are four seat locations, two forward facing and two rear facing. We also have light boxes located on the rear wall. Inside those two rear compartments, you'll find adjustable shelving and LED lighting. Underneath the two seats in the center, you'll find a seat riser which has additional storage D-handle to gain access. Overhead, you'll find your intercom system. As we move to the opposite side rear wall, you'll find additional light boxes. Now let's go ahead and look uh, to the forward section. This is the opposite side EMS compartment adjustable shelving, LED lighting. In between the two of those, you'll find the rear section of the engine. You'll find this access point for your daily checks for the oil and transmission. Let's go ahead and take a general view here from the rear section looking forward. You have additional storage here and also radio chargers. Access panel on the passenger and driver side. As we move to the rear section, you'll also find your module for your Q2B. This is for your siren system. Moving to the rear section also, you'll find between the passenger seats, uh, the main unit for your unit radio. Let's go ahead and move down to the passenger side or officer section. First affixed to the door panel, we're gonna find all of our warning labels. Also in the hinged area, you're gonna find the fill location for your windshield wiper fluid. Just beneath that, you'll find the additional grab handle in red for getting in and out of the cab. As we move just inside of the cab, you'll find the SRS label indicating supplemental restraint system. This is an airbag. Do not mount anything within this area, as you can see the warning information just below. Moving to the top in the center, you'll find your siren brake push button. Just beneath that, you'll find a USB 12 volt access. And then you'll also find two switches here, air horn and mechanical siren. Here's a close up of those two switches. First, the siren brake, and then also your 12 volt access panel for USB. On the right hand side of the uh, cab passenger side, you'll find your light and light control. Overhead of the officer position, you'll find your go light. This is a spotlight over the light bar. You'll also find your Firecom headset module. Moving to the left of this location, you'll find your unit radio. Moving just to the left of this location, more in the center of the apparatus, you'll find your siren controls and also your PA speaker system. 
Moving it about the left shoulder, you'll find the charging location or dock for your computer system. And then moving to the right, you'll find your MDT. Let's take a look further to the left where you'll find two charging stations here for your portable radios and then also MapBook storage. Looking to the rear, you'll find your two forward-facing seats and also two EMS compartments. Let's move to the driver's area. Affixed to the door panel, you'll find all of your warning labels and information guides. Moving just inside of that location on the seat, you'll find seat belt information. Moving down to about the right ankle area, you'll find additional caution and warning labels. And you'll also find this placard manufactured by Pierce for the city of Tucson. You have a date of January of 2020, job number 33922-04, gross vehicle weight rating, cold tire inflation. It has your VIN number, fluid capacities for the component, and also fluid type. Moving to the door panel, you'll find your window controls and door lock. Let's move further down to the floorboard area where you'll find your air horn foot pedal. Let's move now just to the right of this location where you'll find your accelerator, brake treadle, and as we move to the left, you can see the location for your air horn. Let's move up to about the left knee where you'll find your master battery switch. That's going to be the silver switch. I've got a next image here that have a little bit better close up. Let's start first with your master battery switch on the left hand side. There are three locations here for your techs. You have a tech module, engine transmission, ABS diagnostic port, and also a display port. Down in the next set, you've got four indicators here or switches, ABS diagnostics, DPF regen, engine diagnostics, and regen inhibit. Let's move just upward from this location. You'll find your pump shift. There are instructions for road to pump and then also instructions from pump to road. Remember when exiting the cab for pump operations, you need the pump engaged and the OK to pump green indicators illuminating. Let's move now to the opposite side where you'll find a set of switch panels, future switches, and also location for your load manager. Moving up, you'll find your mirror control. This happens to be for your flat mirror. As we move to the dash, you'll find your ignition switch, and above that, you'll find your start switch. Moving just slightly to the right, you'll find a switch labeled EM, which stands for Emergency Master, controls all of your emergency lights. To the right, headlights, and also a panel switch allowing you to brighten or dim the panel lights. As we move as a general view here of the driver's space, let's start with the left-hand side, transmission temperature, oil pressure, DEF level, and water temperature. On the right-hand side, you'll find volts, fuel level, front air and rear air, speedometer and tachometer located in the center, diagnostic information displays above and below the speedometer. On the right, you'll find this diamond, pull to apply your system parking brake and push to release. On the right hand side, you'll find information here with your Allison transmission pad for a pump in drive. As we move upward, you'll find on the right hand side, your windshield wiper control push for fluid. And also you'll find your Pierce command zone, a tremendous amount of information at your fingertips. Please see your owner's manual for more information. Here's a close up now of the Allison transmission pad. As we move up, we'll find the engine brake on and off switch. We have a setting switch for low, medium, and high for that engine brake. Electronic siren, siren brake in red. You have perimeter lights and also mirror heat. Let's move just slightly to the right where your air conditioning controls are. Just beneath that, you'll find a caution label here to disengage your retarder when on slippery or wet surfaces. Also warning buzzer information and also an on off switch for your MDT. Above that, you'll find climate control for heat and defrost and also air conditioning. Let's go ahead and move to the center section of your apparatus where you'll find this red indicator light. If flashing, do not move your truck. You have a compartment or door ajar. We'll move now left over the operator's head to this placard. This is information here regarding your vehicle. Height, 10 feet, 2.5 inches. Length, 31 feet, 5 inches. Gross vehicle weight rating, 42,000 pounds. If you make any adjustments to your vehicle, please update this placard. Let's move to the right, identify a few of the rocker switches. First, starting with your emergency lights. On the left, emergency master switch, roof light, front warning lights, side warning lights, lower rear warning, and upper rear warning. When any of these switches have been engaged, the light will illuminate indicating that it is on. 
Moving to the right hand side, same set of switches. We have rocker switches indicating for your high beam flash, an on off for your opticom, front flood, driver side scene lights, passenger side scene lights, and rear scene lights. Same thing, if anything is on, the green light will illuminate. Let's move just to the right of this location where you'll find your control module for your go light. That is the spotlight on top of the light bar. As we move to the center, you'll find your siren control and also traffic advisor. Let's take a look overhead. You'll find your air conditioning unit, push on and off red or white lights, and also your intercom system. As we look to the rear, two forward facing seats and two rear facing seats. Congratulations, Tucson, Arizona on your new Pierce Fire apparatus, job number 33922-04. Once again, if you have any questions, please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Thank you and congratulations.